with the introduction of distal chip endoscopes, lesions in the pharynx and larynx can be better visualized. For an adequate examination, patient instructions and sometimes local anesthesia are the key to a successful procedure. When needed, cotton pledges with local anesthesia and a decongestant can be helpful. An anesthetic spray can be used to anesthetize the pharynx by letting the patient deeply inhale. The examination can be performed in the seated or standing position, but be aware of a good post with a straight back and fixation of the hands on a patient's nose. Make sure that the endoscope is in a straight line. This will result in easier turning of the endoscope when passing the nasal cavity and examining the larynx. When entering the nasal cavity, always make sure to follow the open lumen. When you see white sides on your endoscopic image, this means you're touching nasal structures, which can be uncomfortable for the patient. When entering the nasal pharynx, you can test the palatum by letting the patient make an S sound. By letting the patient breathe through the nose, the palatum opor fluent laryngoscopy, the larynx is examined in four stages, namely the palatum, base of the tongue, glottis and pyriform sinus. Pharyngeal musculature can be tested by letting the patient make an increasing tone. When examining the oropharynx, move the endoscope from left to right and let the patient stick out the tongue to adequately visualize the valecula. When examining the larynx, try to avoid hitting any of the endolaryngeal structures, which will result in a gag reflex and sensitization of the larynx. Start your examination from the base of the tongue and examine the supraglottic structure. When examining the glottis, let the patient phonate and move the camera to the arytenoids. Afterwards, let the patient breathe normally to provide a clear view on the vocal cords. By tilting the tip of the endoscope anteriorly, you get a better vision of the anterior commissure. With the recent introduction of virtual chromoendoscopy, such as iScan from Pentac, it is possible to determine tumor boundaries more adequately and visualize vascular structures. To adequately visualize the hypopharynx, the patient should make a Vasalva maneuver by blowing on the hand, which results in air in the hypopharynx. A Vasalva maneuver combined with pressing the tongue against the palatum results in an even better view. When examining the left pyriform sinus, the patient should look to the right and the other way around. During inspection of the pyriform sinus, pay close attention to the medial wall. By moving the tip of the endoscope in the pyriform sinus posteriorly and letting the patient swallow, the esophagus can be examined. With the introduction of digital endoscopes with a working channel, transnasal esophagoscopy is possible by blowing air through the esophagus. The key to a successful laryngoscopy is clear patient instructions and good cooperation.